And then once we got across the Drake Passage, we weren't so seasick anymore. The water was much calmer. There were some protecting islands. And we got to go on shore. So raise your hand if you notice something about this picture. Yes. There is a lot of snow. That is a good thing to notice. Did you notice something different? There's penguins in the background. There are lots of penguins in the background. Okay. Um, so this is a Gen 2 penguin. And we saw four different species of penguins. I have pictures of three. The Gen 2 penguin has a really red beak, so you can tell apart from some of the others. It doesn't have any orange otherwise on its body. And what color is there kind of underneath its flippers or its wings? Pink. Why do you think it would have pink underneath its wings? Because of its body. <laughs> because of its skin. So I will tell you that sometimes underneath their wings it looks pink, and sometimes it looks kind of white, like or a little bit grayish, like the rest of it. So it's not always pink. So it's. Um, so anybody have any scientific theories about how come it might look pink sometimes, but not all the time? We in back. The feathers rub off. When the they feathers rub off. That's interesting. Um, the the feathers underneath the wings are almost scaly, like a reptile's scale. They're they're not very long, and the um, I'm sure they shed sometimes, but I did not see a lot of shedding penguin feathers. Penguin feathers are interesting because they're hollow. So sort of like polar bears have hollow fur that helps insulate them. Penguins have hollow feathers that insulate them. So that's a really good thought. I don't think that's why they're pink though. Do you have another thought? Maybe it tells it's female or male. So males and females sometimes have different coloration. That's a good thought that can separate them. I will tell you both female and male penguins, when they're coming back from swimming hard in the ocean, will have pink underneath their wings or their flippers. So it's not a male or female. That's a really good thought though. And penguins do sometimes fall down. They are really good swimmers. Has anyone ever seen a puffin swim underwater at the Sea Life Center? Penguins are kind of like that. They are super coordinated in the in the ocean. When they walk on land, they look a little wobbly and a little bit awkward. Um, so, how do we get the, how do we connect that with the pink color underneath their wings? You've got something back. So that's a good thought. So when birds' feathers get wet, they stick together and you see the skin underneath a little bit more. Um, I think the feathers on the penguins underneath the wings are small enough that they probably don't shrink a lot with water and they, they are pretty waterproof kinds of feathers because they spend so much time in the water. But that's a, that's a really interesting thought. One more thought. Do the feathers shed off? I don't. I didn't see a lot of shedding penguin feathers, so I don't think that's it. What else in the body is pink or red that circulates and moves around? So maybe maybe something to do with the feathers. We were sort of moving on, thinking about the color here. So what do you think about the color? Maybe something about the blood. So blood is red and pink. And so what could be going on that sometimes it's pink and sometimes it's not pink? Um, like when you're moving around, the blood is flowing faster. Mm -hmm. So maybe like after it's done swimming, the blood is flowing really fast so you can see it better. Yeah, so there's some really good thoughts about maybe the blood flow is a little bit different. Does anybody have a dog? you ever watched your dog after it runs a lot? What does your dog do when it's super hot and it's exercised a lot? So if your dog is really hot, they stick their tongue out and they pant a lot. <laughs> right, okay. yeah. Why do dogs do that? Do they know how to sweat? Dogs don't have sweat glands like we do. If you run really hard, you might get sweaty on your forehead or under your armpits or somewhere else in your body. Dogs can't sweat because they don't have sweat glands, so they have to use their tongues. 
Penguins don't have sweat glands either. And the way they cool off is they circulate more blood flow underneath their flippers and their wings. And that's how they cool off. So somebody mentioned reptiles. Reptiles kind of have circulate their blood differently whether they're warm or cold. So penguins have that too. So you can actually tell if a penguin has been feeding. If it's coming back from the ocean, it's going to have pink underneath its wings. And if it's going towards the ocean, it will be white. So that was something I learned about penguins. Okay. <laughs> Different kind of penguin. Raise your hand if you know what kind this is. A chin strap, how can you tell? Because of the black line under its chin. Okay. Um, and one last kind of penguin that we saw. Does anybody know what kind this is? This one's a little harder to pronounce. Yeah. Is it the rock? The rock hopper penguin? We didn't see any rock hopper penguins. They're a little bit farther north. Emperor penguins are bigger. Emperor penguins are like four feet tall and they have a lot of orange around them. This is the littlest penguin. This isn't a daily penguin. Um, and what do you notice about this a daily penguin? Someone who hasn't said anything. Its tail feathers are a little different. They're all spread out. Uh huh. What do you notice? Um, that its head's completely black except for the. Its head is completely black except for a little bit of red at the beak and then white eyes. And the daily penguins are easy to spot because they have white around their eyes. Someone in the back. Um, what do you notice about this penguin? The beak is tiny, much tinier than the Gentoo penguin that we saw earlier. What else do you notice about this particular penguin? Huh? But it's not, but it's not like, its head isn't straight. It's actually kind of looking up. Yeah, and you know one thing I noticed watching penguins? They're kind of like owls. They can move their heads around in all kinds of ways. They are way more flexible around their neck than we are used to. What's this? So the baby is actually inside a little bit of a nest. There's a rock nest here, and this baby is so hot, it's just kind of passed out. There were a lot of really hot babies that way because it was like 42 degrees. It was really, really warm. Um, okay. so, so raise your hand if you know what kind of penguin this is. What kind of penguin? What kind of penguin with the white eyes? The Adeli penguin with some Adeli penguin chicks. And this Adeli penguin is making a home for the chicks in actually a rock house that was built by shipwrecked sailors in 1903 when they got shipwrecked on this island. They gathered up a whole bunch of rocks and they built a shelter for themselves hoping they would be rescued. Um, and then the Adeli penguin used that for shelter. So if you guys are really quiet, you're going to hear some penguin sounds. Raise your hand if you know what kind of penguins these are in this video. Can you tell from, from that? Who knows which kind of penguins these are? Um, I forgot the name, but I think the first one you showed us. The first one? It was the first one. Do you remember what they were called? Like Gen and like the number? Gen, 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 Gen 2. These are Gen 2 penguins. So listen to Gen 2 penguins. So jungle birds make a lot of specific noises as well. How about with the purple shirt? Can I hear you know? mm -hmm. Dolphins maybe sound like that. Dolphins make a lot of calling sounds that do have some similarities. I, I haven't thought about dolphins, but I, I agree with you. I think they sound a little bit like dolphins. Any other different animals that aren't birds that maybe sound a little bit like that to you? A donkey is a bird. A donkey. Donkeys oh, have loud. sounds that get louder and quieter like that. I hadn't thought about yeah. that either. I sort of thought they sounded like birds. It would be really loud and then quiet and loud and quiet. So, so let's be quiet. What, raise your hand if you noticed what that penguin was doing in this video. You can tell me what was happening in that video. 
deal with the red jacket. Yeah. Um, it's what I can't even. It was making a nest. What was it using to make a nest? Uh, small rocks. Small rocks. And there were specific sized rocks that they needed to use. Where did it get the rock? It got the rock from over by the other penguin. Was the other penguin happy about that? No. Did anybody see that other penguin open its beak and look kind of like, get out of my space, don't steal my rock? So penguins do a lot of borrowing rocks from each other. And talking to the penguin researchers, they think these are probably young penguins that don't actually have a nest yet. This penguin here has two little chicks. These penguins are probably teenage penguins who are practicing making nests and learning how to be good penguins so that when it comes time for them to actually have a family, they'll know how to do it right. So they are busy stealing rocks from other penguins, trying to build a nest and trying to prove to the other penguins, look, I'd be a really good penguin to have babies with because I know how to make a good nest. And that's kind of how they find their meat. So people try really, really hard to keep the environment clean, but sometimes there's a mess that happens. And sometimes penguins even make messes and contribute to waste. And that's natural waste. And the nitrogen from penguins actually helps the mosses grow. But one of the things that scientists think a lot about is how can we help keep Antarctica a clean and healthy place for the animals that really call that home? Because it's not a human home down there. It's really, it's a home for the animals. So one of my questions for you guys as scientists is you are all powerful people. You make choices every day that influence your lives and the lives of people around you. So what can you do to help keep Antarctica a safe and healthy place for the animals that call that home? Did you end up first? So that's, I don't know if everybody could hear that. It's a really good thought. So use less stuff. Make less garbage in the first place. And if there's something particularly plastic that you could use that isn't plastic, that would be a really good choice because a lot of that plastic does end up in the ocean and that's not healthy for the whales or for the penguins. So if you think about, do I really need this plastic thing? Do I need a plastic straw with that drink that I'm getting? Or could I maybe get it in a reusable cup and say, no thanks, I don't need a straw? So that is definitely something you could do, and that can make a difference. If everybody here said, I don't want a straw, thank you, maybe some of the businesses would say, actually, straws are not so hot anymore. Maybe people don't want straws, or maybe people want paper straws instead of plastic straws. So that is one example of how you guys as young people can actually definitely make a difference. What do you think? Uh, maybe not litter. Not litter, that is a big one. Whoever has by accident oops, thought, well, maybe it'd just be easier to kind of drop this thing here. It, it adds up if everybody drops something. We weren't even allowed to bring any food or anything to drink with us onto Antarctica because they were afraid we might, oops, by accident drop something. Even though we didn't mean to litter, they didn't even let us take it off the boat. So not littering is a big thing. What if you see litter lying around? You can pick it up. You can try and leave a place cleaner than you found it. And if you see someone else littering, you might gently say, you know what, could you pick that up? Being careful about your garbage is definitely something that you guys can do. Who's got a different idea, something else that you could do? Yeah. Recycling more. Recycling more is definitely something that can reduce the waste that gets into the oceans. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, keep the penguins, um, um, pick a ball the garbage in the ocean. Pick up the garbage in the ocean for the whales and the penguins. And one thing that some people have talked about is let's just put less garbage in the ocean in the first place. So that would be one big thing. And there are some researchers who are thinking about there's already a lot of garbage in the oceans. How can we get that out of there? So there are some scientists who are doing some really interesting research about how can we get rid of the trash that we've already put in the ocean. So you guys have some good ideas. I think we're going to wrap things up here. I'm just going to invite you to think about what could I do to help, just me personally, to help make the world a better place for penguins as well. So thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me the quote to take with me to Antarctica. And thank you guys for being curious scientists.